Welcome to Licking Non-Vanilla, a sex-positive hour of talk about kink, sexual mores, and writing dirty words. So grab a cup of cocoa, your favorite easy chair, and the lube as we go sailing into the dark, sweet waters of all things naughty. On Licking Non-Vanilla, with your hosts, Ralph Greco Jr. and M. Christian. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another version, another episode, another go-round of Licking Non-Vanilla. With me, your host, one of your hosts, Ralph Greco Jr., here in the wilds of uh, New Jersey. And over there on the other side of the world, well, I say that all the time, it's just the other side of the country, <laughs> is uh, my co-host and great friend Aww. and wonderful writer, and he can be bought for a small fee, uh, M. Christian. How you doing, Chris? Hi there. I'm the person of rentable virtue. Yes. I mean, thank you, my dearest friend, and also another fantastic writer. Uh, yeah, this is Chris, otherwise known as M. Christian, from the very green hills of Eugene, Oregon. Hmm. Is it rainy out there? Because I always ask you this. It's not, I know Oregon always, only there. You know, it's funny. It's like, it's not like rainy, but it's still damn cold. And it's almost like, what is it? Almost May. And it's still cold out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on the East Coast here. And actually, the guest we have today is on the East Coast. I won't I won't uh, disclose her, her specific <laughs> location, but she's an East Coaster. And we'll find out if she's a life, life or East Coaster, if she's been here forever. We are speaking about Amanda Wilson. Amanda is, uh, well, she's going to tell us. She's... She, She's one of the architects, I believe. I guess you, guess you could say architect of hashtag open. And yes. we had Sarah on, Sarah Sloan, mm-hmm. which is the – she's Sarah's uh, PR person for you guys, right? Yes. And Sarah Sloane. Sloane. You know, that's funny. We were saying <laughs> Sloane or Sloane when we were talking to her. And uh, we had a great jaw with her. Oh, it was and wonderful. It was spoke, actually fantastic. Yeah. And I spoke to David of hashtag open mm-hmm. um, for a written article. But now we're going to talk to Amanda for, for audio. So, Amanda, how are you today? I am doing great and so excited to be here. Thank you for that, for having me on. And um, I just wanted to say I have been to Eugene, Oregon. It is a lovely place. So we went to a little theater there with um, Dan Savage's um, Hump Festival. Oh, cool. Cool. Very cool. So, yeah. Wow. Eugene. Yeah. It's a <laughs> cool place. Am, it really is. An East Coaster. I I grew up in the South in uh, Tennessee, okay. and um, then, gosh, I guess about eight years ago, decided to go back to school and move to New England, and was living in Boston, going to school in Cambridge, and um, found this uh, silly little dating app. If that's really you know, they're all dating apps, but what is dating these mm-hmm. days? Um, app and found david and it has just been bliss and pain and torture the good kind and um <laughs> that's the only guy there is right? that's the a, we a journey since then <laughs> what what a what drew you to that app specifically when you when you first found it well so you know i had done all of the other kind of traditional um dating platforms, if you will. Mm -hmm. And this one was Thunder. And, you know, kind of had this slant of of, uh, hooking up uh, singles with couples. And I had had just a past of uh, finding myself at the beginning of possibly being in relationships with men that I found out later were married. (laughs) Okay. Um, Mm. And so I thought that this might have like a more kind of just open communication platform. Um, And then obviously in the fact that, you know, they were bringing, that they were bringing people together for a certain type of activity, right? It was, Mm -hmm. it was to have a three way. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I found that, just kind of sex positive um, mm-hmm. environment, uh, really accepting. And and David and I found out through meeting there, you know, our sexual desires and our interests and our kinks were already kind of laid out on the table. So mm-hmm. we didn't have to have this kind of weird conversation, you know, a week or a month or three months in, like, mm-hmm. I kind of like uh, 
non-vanilla sex you know what about you um we just we had that conversation from the beginning which really Mm -hmm. kind of allowed us to i think get to know each other on just kind of a deeper level um because as you know if you're if you're talking about communication and and with even two people but you know definitely three or more people um that that uh that's that's a powerful thing having that communication and um it makes it makes figure out who's going to wash the dishes or walk the dog <laughs> a little bit easier. <laughs> I think I think it's true. I think that you know, Chris, you would you I mean generally for everything I've ever experienced, I would say anything, any good communication from the jump. I don't care what 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 you're getting involved in, whether you know business relationship or a sexual relationship is mm-hmm. is always welcome. You know, I think that uh, the days of hiding you know, behind closed doors or, or half open doors. Um, it, as the older you get, that's just something you don't need anymore. Absolutely, Rafi. Absolutely. I think that's a, that's really important these days, especially issues around consent, but also around communication and, and nature itself. I mean, because if you don't do it, it's going to bite you in the ass later on. It's just like, yeah. you know, I mean, it's tough to come out and say, I like certain things. But, you know, dating apps have helped, you know, quite a bit with that because you can just little click on a little button and says, you know, polyamory or domination mm-hmm. or, you know, mm-hmm. gender play or something similar. So it makes it a little easier. still right. not easy, but it still makes it easier. <laughs> So, so Amanda, how do you go from you find the app, you get involved, you and David get involved, and you're starting to have good communication and good times to working now within Hashtag Open? So, you know, at the time we met and um, we found out later we were the first couple to get engaged on um, what is now called Field. It was Thrinder back then. And, um, you know, we were just really excited about uh, – possibilities of uh, ethical non-monogamy and you know we could see that it was kind of rising and that more people were were finding out about this possibility Mm -hmm. and a different way to shape their relationship Uh, and uh, but we continued to have fun and be on all of the dating apps and it it kind of started out like this joke. It's like, well, if you had your date, like, what would you change? And, mm-hmm. you know, what would you make different and all of this right. other stuff? And then um, we just happened to be at a place in our lives where, um, you know, David has a um, background in technology and um, internet service providers. And um, he knew how to bring all of these aspects together to, mm-hmm. to, to build this app, um, it just turned out to be a lot harder than we originally thought that it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, you know, it usually is. But, the, the, good, yes. the good things do take a deep dive. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and I often say that anything that we're doing is hard because that's, that, that's how you that's how you learn, that's how you grow, that's how you, you know, make things better. Um, so, and at the time I was studying um, cybersecurity and... Uh, um, really felt that there was a strong need to um, have a platform where the the architects of that platform were worried about the privacy and the security of their users from Mm -hmm. the very beginning. Um, You know, we we just, we see that companies don't don't put that type of attention because it costs a lot of money into these things until something happens and then, you know, it's too late. But, um, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to, we really wanted to build an app for, you know, just the way that we wanted it to be. We wanted Mm -hmm. to, you know, respect people's data as an extension of who they are. You know, we, we believe your data is inherently human. Um, and we have, we have the you know need to respect that and um that's why we don't sell your data that's you know written in our um, privacy policy and um and just you know building a platform to where people can come together as rational actors and be their most authentic self and and you know, once they accept that and they're comfortable putting that out there into the world um allowing others to to come and find you because 
I found it really does not matter what you're into. There is somebody else out there in the world that is into the same thing. <laughs> well, that's true. When you say that's true, Chris, that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Ralph. I mean, it's just like, yeah, that's that's fantastic on many levels. I mean, one, you know, being open to all kinds of different aspects of human sexuality for finding people to to be with, and then also the security issues because a lot of places out there are a little. Mm-hmm. Um, how to put this politely shady when it comes to <laughs> yeah, right. when it comes to data mm-hmm. it's just like you know it's it's really kind of disturbing how often they they just kind of dip into your private information to sell you whatever or just pass along to somebody else it becomes a commodity mm-hmm. you know and that's you know you don't you want you want to feel you're be, you're safe and the worst thing is when your private information becomes a commodity to somebody, you know, and, and, and as uh, Amanda is alluding to, it does in very many places in even the most benign spots. You don't even know what you're giving away mm-hmm. and, and until it's too late. I mean, there was just a recent Facebook hack and there was also a recent only fans hack. Yes. Well, only fans is claiming it wasn't a hack, but you know, there's a, there a bunch of stuff was taken. So, you know, I, I guess we run the risk when we're online that there's going to be certain inherent, uh, pitfalls that we're going to because we're online right we know that but we want to lessen that as much as possible right i mean that makes Mm -hmm. sense you know um it does because you know as of you know right now unfortunately the 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 things that people want to do with their bodies and that they want to do with other consenting adults uh, um still has the power to be weaponized against them (laughs) yeah no kidding and so you know just making sure that 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 leaks like that you know things always happen, but making mm-hmm. sure that we're always doing our job on the front end to, to check for these things because, um, the, the, the harm that can be brought to is, um, is something to always, you know, be considerate of. So Amanda, what, what, what's your official title there at hashtag dot open? I am the co-founder, David okay. and I, yep. We okay, co-founded was, this, yes, cool. from the beginning and, and- you guys just uh, um, celebrated an anniversary, right? That was one of the emails I got. An we anniversary, did. right? Yeah. yeah, we, um, yes, we have been in the, uh, um, let's see, the Google Play Store for okay. uh, three years now. Three oh, okay. years. So um, we were recently booted from the Google Play Store for. That was another days. thing I want to talk to you about because I saw that email. Yeah, before, definitely. So yeah. And you wrote an open letter to them, right? Yes, yes, Mm -hmm. we did because, you know, people can only get to our app through 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 two different stores. It's either you know the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, Mm -hmm. and 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 Google just came and arbitrarily just decided to tell us that four of the um, words that we use in our ASO, which is just our our app description language, um, and changing your ASO is something that apps do on a regular basis. It's it's just like your, you know, search engine um, Mm -hmm. optimization. Um, So you're always kind of playing around with words. And, and, you know, a couple of weeks ago, as an example, uh, Caroline Rose Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani's daughter, came out and wrote this article about a unicorn's tail and um, how three-way sex with couples has made her a better person. I remember hearing about this, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you have stories like that uh, that are trending, you can take some of those keywords and then put them into your ASO to to make your um, app show up. Absolutely. And so they came back and told us that Four words were outside of their, you know, policy. Um, threesomes with an S. Threesome, the the number three, S O M E. Kinky dates. Kinky date apparently is fine, but kinky dates is a no no. Again and with the, the last pluralize- what? Pluralizing? Yeah. Yes, it, that's it strange, huh? And then the last one, which is my favorite, is D T F, which. First of all, it's just three letters put together. But second of all, was a campaign for OK Cupid, you, you know, which is you know, down to fuck. And right. so now they're coming and they're saying that we, that they've just, you know, they pulled us from the Google Play Store because we have used some of these words mm-hmm. and um, makes no sense. It, it, it just really, it made no sense. Um, and they even said, you know, look, we, we have suspended you, basically sit and wait 
if you try and contact us on this matter, it, it may take longer for you to be, you know, brought back. What? You know? Which to me is just, just the word. Like, don't tell me that I can't fight for my 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 yeah, company and my community. Yeah, that makes no sense. Uh, I don't want to hear from you. In other words, I don't right. want to hear from you. I want to. I want to. I want to throw this down upon you. Cancel mm-hmm. you, not let you be there, but not let you say anything about it. And if you say anything about it, you're going to be spanked anyway. So yes. it's going to take longer. In other words, we're going to we're going to do what we want to do, but you you, you just sit there like a nice nice girl and be quiet. In other words, yes, that's what's so right. infuriating. Yes. I mean, I expect that kind of behavior from Apple because they're kind of notoriously anti-sex, but Google, and then I mean, like you said, the 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 words aren't as important as the app itself. So why not simply send you a message saying remove these words and you're cool? Why take the whole app down because you changed your you know the keywords? It makes absolutely no sense. But again, we're talking about these tech giants who you know can do whatever they damn well or they feel they can do whatever they damn well want. You know, so yeah, I, mm-hmm. it's so frustrating. And, and just just and adding he, the, the, uh, an S. It's not even the word. It was adding an S to the word. Mm-hmm. Like that's ludicrous, you know. Yes, it, it is, and we, you know, we ended up actually um, taking out three out of the four words. So I was not willing to take out three cents because, again, this happened right at the time that uh, Caroline mm-hmm. Rose Giuliani is getting all this attention, and mm-hmm. um, and they put us back. <laughs> Fantastic. So it, it's like, uh, you know, and, but what they don't, what they don't realize, or maybe they do when they just don't care is mm. in that time, you know, we, we have a very small team that works exceptionally hard and mm. all the work that had been put into our ASO rankings, we, ju- we, we lost. Uh, so so we're words- now stepping to fight back up to, uh. to, to, to get our, our previous rankings. Yeah. Because you, you guys, need to be up all the time. This is part of your business, right? To be available yes. as much as po- all the time, right? I mean, that's yes. what, man. So did they ever come back to you with, and I'm, I'm asking, I'm answering my own question here. Did they ever come back to you uh, with a reason why this all went down? No, no. So no. let me ask you another and question, you, which, which you may not want to answer. Would you, if there was another game in town, just as powerful and influential, would you jump ship from Google? Oh, that's a good question. One that has not ever even came into my headspace because it's just always been the two. But yeah, I mean, no, but, but, you know, putting our app out there on another platform to where people could reach it, certainly. But, you know, half of the country right now is, is, either on Google or they're on Apple. So, I mean, it just, and during the time that we were actually suspended, uh, you know, our Apple downloads tripled um, some. So it it is, um, no, we have to have the Google Play Store. Yeah, because Crystal, when I talked to David initially, Mandy, you'll know this too, we were talking about Mm -hmm. some problems you guys were having with Facebook at the time. And, and not being able to get listed there because of language, which mm-hmm. was seemed kind of odd because they were listing other people with the same kind of language. So um, it just seems so arbitrary. But like Chris said, I don't know if it's a – I don't know who makes these decisions and why they make these decisions and what – how are they are, – are they fueled by prejudice or by the fact that you're not selling information and they want you to? I mean, I don't – it's just odd to me. Yeah, the transparency is is not there. Right. Exactly. exactly. Right. I mean, I know I know that some of it is handled by algorithms. So they just simply yeah. set up a a bot that basically searches everything that they have and looks for these certain keywords, and that automatically mm-hmm. well, you, it, well, it doesn't usually automatically get you flagged, but it puts you on like a no fly list. Um, and mm-hmm. but a lot of the big problem, and I'm, I'm not really an expert, but I've done a little bit of research, is they have the bots on one side, and then there's other people who actually are looking at these things. But the problem is, if those people have an agenda, you know, if they're anti-sex, if they're anti-poly, if they're anti-kink, you know, if they're just simply, you know, don't, you know, think they know better than everybody else, they can red flag it. And there's also the problem of the reporting system, because it's supposed to be in place there to, like, flag inappropriate content. But unfortunately, a lot of people who are, 
uh, let's say jerks, um, like to go through and flag anything they think that, you know, violates their, their weird values. And some mm-hmm. of these people have no, nothing, nothing better to do with their lives and go through and flag everything they possibly can as many times That's as true. possible. That's, they're they're and sitting the, on the computer all day. And the algorithm doesn't garbage. know that it's coming from prejudice. They just simply know they're getting reports. Right. And this happens right. all the time on social media, everything from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter to you name it. Right. If you are out about what you do or, or your sexuality or your gender, you're going to get flagged. And the, the platforms don't give a flying. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, everybody mm-hmm. running. It, the prejudice and all these kind of things are born from fear, right? Mm-hmm. People fearing that Amanda may like to be spanked. I'm not saying you do, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, the uh, – <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I don't no offense, Amanda, but I don't care if you do or you don't. It's not my business unless I'm unless I'm with you. That would be mm-hmm. a, a, a matter of what we discuss or don't. But the fact that you may like that, or Chris may like what he likes, or I may like what I like, is pretty much not only no one else's business except the people we're, we're playing with, mm-hmm. right? Or being with, right? And secondly, it's not. I don't understand why why it should be limited or judged but i i don't i i i walk around like a pollyanna thinking well, why would people give a shit you know mm-hmm. i just don't understand especially amanda you, you're providing a great service people coming onto the, the the app and finding each other and they're not bothering anybody else they're doing their thing you know like it doesn't make any mm-hmm. sense and i mean you know and we we have made it to our platform uh, specifically was built to make the communication between those two partners, uh, mm-hmm. you know, as easy as possible and communication between whoever it is that, that, you know, you might match with and, and ultimately want to meet up with, uh, mm-hmm. um, because communication around sex can be hard. And, uh, um, and, and certainly when you, when you mix sex and politics, uh, um, oh, yeah rhetoric comes in there and no and that rhetoric gives control and power mm-hmm. and 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 so no I think because certain things aren't normalized yet um that they still hold on to those things so that they can they can have control and, and power over people let me just interject uh, you're listening to licking non-vanilla um and we're talking to amanda wilson and she is of works heavily hard and trying to deliver a good experience for people on hashtag open people who like to find each other for various reasons and uh, um, certainly sex positive reasons. Um, And we're talking about working through the trenches of prejudice and and misunderstanding and rhetoric and weirdness from search engines and and the like. (laughs) Um, So, Given your druthers, Amanda, what what would you like to see happen, like right now and in the future? Like, if I said to you, okay, if you had, if it was a perfect world, what would it look like to you? Oh, I mean, if it was a perfect world, uh, you know, something something would get out there to where the masses would find out about hashtag open, mm-hmm. and um, and and then we would just keep building a community and, and we have one right now. We, we have over 90,000 profiles inside of the app wow. and, wow. um, and they're, they're a good group. They're a good group of, um, just human beings who really get it. And, and also know that there, there's a learning curve here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, when people come into kink or BDSM or Paul Amory or anything they they have to learn what the, you know, the boundaries are and, um, so that they can move freely amongst those things. Mm-hmm. So we would continue to build a community where sex is, is talked about uh, um, in a realistic, positive way. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, again, at, part of my background is in game theory and that all comes to being rational actors, right? And, mm-hmm. and all rational actors really are is, is, somebody that has the ability to take on all options that are out there and then they pick the one that is best for them and then they develop strategies to to go after that um Mm -hmm. you know end goal and but until we can have people come to the table and and know how to talk and know how to um you know really put out what they're looking for and um 
and allowing people to match up based on you know, what kind of experiences that, that you want to have. What what are your interests? Uh, and mm. less so on, you know, are you heterosexual? So, okay, are you male, female? Okay, well, then I'm going to, you know, show you the opposite. Mm. All of those labels really didn't... Um, for me, it didn't matter as much. I knew when David and I were dating other people, he, he would come and, oh, you know, look at this person. They they say that they're this or whatever. And it's like, I don't care. Like, what is it that they want to do? What kind yeah. of person do they seem like they are? Right, um, right. And so, you know, just allowing consensual adults to, to come to the table and, and talk about sex realistically and without the shame and the fear and this is where I go a little off the rails and lose a lot of people, but I swear to you, it'll bring world peace. <laughs> well, I, I, it can't, it, it's certainly going to make people happier, you know, and it's good. It's going to just make us a little bit less, you know, I've, I said, Chris and I t- said this all the time, just, I, I, I'm, I'm in for just tending to your own garden. You know what I'm saying? If somebody <laughs> else wants to tend your garden with you, that's great. But like, mm-hmm. I don't need you tending to my garden unless i welcome you into my garden you know and uh i i just it just seems simple right chris i mean it's just absolutely i can't i can't like i completely agree with you amanda i mean i do think it's like it's one of the things that's holding us back as as a planet and a culture is this shame and guilt and judgment when it comes to everything from gender to sex to everything else and it's I do think it's. I do think the thing, the tide is turning. It's just running very slowly, and it's kind of like mm-hmm. two steps forward, one step back. It seems like. I mean, you know, we have like you know, you know, advances happening. Then we have like this anti-trans legislations that are popping up, and now recently one that was like, you know, students have to get permission from their parents before they can study GLBT studies. It's just like it's ridiculous. But you know, I do mm-hmm. think that's kind of like I'm. I'm being optimistic, but I kind of like like to think that's kind of like the dying throes of this kind of outdated attitude but the problem is again it's like there's that side of the thing and then there's also what you're dealing with which is the tech companies that don't know how to handle this and you know nine tens out of ten also overreact so if like you know if there's suddenly like uh some minor controversy in regards to whatever they're the platform is is carrying they have a they swing the pendulum in the exact opposite direction yeah. and suddenly right. you know, like words that have you know are innocuous suddenly get banned because they got linked to this other thing it's like when amazon you know opened the doors and said hey publish your books with us they never thought for a minute that people would put out frankly inappropriate stuff so rather than dealing right. with that they just shut the whole thing down so anything yeah. sex related was was you know, crushed. And it's changed since that happened, but not fast enough. And there's still a lot of people who are dealing with that kind of, you know, fallback. Yeah. It's just interesting to me that, that it just would, everything would seem to be much easier if we just took a step back and took a breath and said, okay, I'm just going to deal with my thing and put it out there or not. And as honestly as possible. And that's the end of the story, you know, as opposed to, I worry about what Amanda's doing with her body. What do I care? You know, say, but exactly. but it, but it, somehow that impacts me or makes me feel uncomfortable. But that's mm-hmm. me. That's not you, Amanda. That's me feeling uncomfortable. Why am I feeling uncomfortable with what you're doing or what you, what hashtag puts out there? What I don't know. What like I don't understand. Like a whole bunch of people, ninety thousand people signed up to do what they're doing out there in the world has nothing to do with me at any level. Unless I get involved with one of those people or, or that app, right? So why would I care to shut them down or or limit them? It just in, in any regard, it doesn't. It could be religion and politics. It doesn't matter. Like Amanda, you were saying, it does become political in a way. It becomes this weird kind of like division. And I I have my I have what I believe in. Man, I, I have to I have to champion this so much. I have to put you down, mm-hmm. which is. Mm-hmm strange to me <laughs> but you know obviously we're all evolved and that's the way it is you know but um amanda you know i got a i have a technical question to ask you okay, Hopefully okay. I can answer it. uh it, you may not be able to i mean you I, this is something that when we spoke to sarah which was mm-hmm. i don't know a couple months ago at least right chris mm-hmm. um, i think so you're right so we put that show up and it was wonderful we had a great like you 
we just jawed with her the whole time. You know, very interesting mm-hmm. person and had a lot to say, and we just had a great time with her, as we are with you. Um, so we put the show up, and we got it. And so Mark is, is working behind the scenes, uh, our producer. Um, he call, he gets in touch with me like about a week later. He says our numbers have spiked after you had Sarah on in mm-hmm. Ireland. So do you have an unusual amount of takers in Ireland that you know of? We don't. We don't. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> and I'm wondering, uh, maybe Sarah has a following following from Ireland? I don't know. I mean, she. no, I. you know what? I don't think so because I did ask her at the <laughs> time. And she said, I, and look, we were, Chris, right? We were thrilled, right? Mm-hmm. We don't care. We don't care where you're coming from. We're happy to have you, you know? But, but we all of a sudden, we saw this spike, in, and I'm like, what's going on with hashtag open an island? But you're, you're saying to me you don't know of any unusual heavy population there more than anywhere else. No, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering now, but um, not that I know of. But, um, you know, most of our, our users are here in the United States. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, and but we are you know a global app but mm-hmm. um let me see yeah it was just uh, look uh, we, chris it was wonderful right <laughs> yeah exactly i mean we also had a spike not necessarily from the from that show but we also had one from india which is also kind of unusual yeah I, i've always kind of wondered where that comes from i know sometimes like i know there's been like uh people done studies like you know certain like you know, redder states have a tendency to view more pornography than other states, and there's other countries yeah. that, you know, mm-hmm. might have restrictions. And, you know, many countries actually block, you know, entire platforms, you know, yeah. so, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, so you won't be able to access that thing. And so it's kind of on underground. Well, but when you make things underground, people start to go, ooh, there's something juicy about this. Therefore, we should right. check it's it out. So it's like, right. yeah. Exactly. There's a big spike because of that. <laughs> well, yeah. So, I, my background, you know, I'm from the South, uh, and I was raised Southern Baptist. Uh, you know, we're very conservative, traditional family, right. and uh, um, and you know, my sex education was just basically, I'm not married, so why would anybody be talking to me about sex? <laughs> <laughs> right, um, of course, you're not right? you're not supposed to be using those parts until you're married, absolutely, yeah. and for and, babies, and, <laughs> right? Yeah. And which, you know, I finally decided, well, look, if I never get married, then I haven't had premarital sex. Um, yeah, right. There you go. But, but I also have realized, too, that if I don't get married, I can't get divorced. So um, that's, Well, that's the number one cause of divorce. Did you hear that? Marriage was the number <laughs> yes, one cause of divorce. Yes, yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I also found out that, you know, if you tell a bunch of teenagers not to do something, oh. guess what it is they want to do? Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's only that thing. Right. And, um, but... You know, just I, you know, we also have a 13 year old daughter, so just um, find it, finding ways to, to talk about to the the next generation of sexually rational players is um, mm-hmm. is interesting and, and ho- is so important, right? Because we don't have nobody's really throwing money into sex education um, true. with the true. mindset of. Uh, just no gender, no bias, no, just like, let's see what we can find out. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, right. and so, I mean, going back to the, the world peace and my ultimate goal is, you know, uh, hashtag open is set up to be a B Corp. Um, we, we want our mission to be, you know, just as important as, um, as anything else really that we do. And part of that mission hopefully will be to put money into research, uh, um, because you know we might find out that kink can cure the common cold, but nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> because nobody's, yeah, nobody's really putting the scientific research into into finding that out. So I, I think sex has the the power to heal a whole, a whole, whole, whole lot. But we're not talking about it. Exactly. I mean, we yeah. are. Right here. Yeah, there's this, there's this big wall of sex education <laughs> in this country because on one side there's like wonderful projects like your own, and there's like the tr- long-standing ones like San Francisco Sex Information, and there's a couple of other ones, and there's some several really good platforms out there, Planned Parenthood, of course, that provide you know non-judgmental sex yeah. information. But the people who need it the most are still you know kind of blocked off. They don't know how to find it, or they get the wrong information, or they you know, are scared of looking at it. So there's like this kind of like 
cultural divide between you know the information and then there's the people who actually need it and that's the problem is trying to get the two to sort of like link up together yeah you know and I, I always feel bad what what, heart, what strikes me specifically is thinking there's somebody out there that has a a desire for something that we would consider non vanilla but maybe not even unusual you know all that to the left and this pe- person feels alone because they don't know anybody else who who's into that they scour so we call the it net clown for tipping inside of hashtag we call it clown tipping like if you are and i didn't mean to interrupt you but you no know, go ahead that's great if if you're sitting at home thinking that like man i've heard of cow tipping that's kind of fun <laughs> i'd really like to tip over a clown <laughs> that right. would get me really excited that's and, exactly you know, it. that's the thinking, point oh my gosh I, you know i'm weird because i want to tip over this clown and right. and you think that you're the only one and you're feeling right. all of this shame and this guilt and and one that's so negative for you right but yeah. then when you can come to a platform and you can find out oh my god there's a whole community of clown tippers yes. out there yes. i'm not alone there are other people yes. that are like me that's so affirming and um and and can be you know quite life-changing for oh for I, I absolutely i mean we <laughs> we see it you know when you, you go to a king convention you know we we see it all the time mm-hmm. you know back when, when we, were, we were in the middle of those things and having those things you see people letting go for a weekend in ways they don't normally do and uh Mm -hmm. and being reaffirmed because there's somebody who gets me or understands me and i'm not a weirdo here or you know what the the words that are used and and i can feel comfortable you know and i and Mm -hmm. i think that because being being alone and lonely just in in life is not a good thing right but then feeling that in your sexuality is even 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 deeper because that's at the core of who, you know, that's really what gets us, right? We're walking around with those ideas in our head all the time. And it's one thing that, to have a solitary existence, but to know or to feel that no one else wants to tip a clown like you do, um, that could be a little, that could lead to some problems, man, you know? Some mm-hmm. certainly, even, on, a, on even a minuscule level, you know? And I, I think that it's, it's, it's empowering that people are like you and they're at, you're out there and you're working it work trying to work it and get people to together you know for for great clown tipping that's basically and i love your sexual education really angle too you 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 also recently talked about where you're offering experts talking about various kink and poly things i think that's absolutely wonderful um you know yeah. that's that's something i think is very exciting because we need more of that because a lot of people get their information from porn and nothing not just like porn but it's a fantasy you know, it's not reality. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to have someone actually saying this is the re- this is what actually happens in kink. This is actually what happens in poly. And, you know, kind of give that kind of grounding and reality it helps people, I think, even more. Mm-hmm. Well, so when David and I first met, um, he had a friend who had invited him to a um, kink party in New York City. And, you know, he asked me, he was like, do you want to go? And I'm a win in Rome person. Like I will try anything twice. So, mm-hmm. um, so I was like, yes, you know, I, of course I'm from East Tennessee. We don't have kink and BDS parties right, that right. I know of down there. Um, <laughs> and, but when I went the thing that just shocked me the most was, was, was the rules and the boundaries mm-hmm. and, and they were so clear and they were so defined yes. and, you know, they wanted to make sure that I felt welcome, that I was safe. You know, they, they let me know, look, somebody may come up to you and ask you if you want to do something that, mm-hmm. that that's fine. But you know, you say, no, that's the end of it. If they come right. back up to you, you come and get me and they're gone. Right. And, and when you give, at least for me, a woman who who hasn't really been able to explore my sexuality for me, it was always kind of exploring my sexuality for, for men, mm-hmm. um, giving us that safety of, uh, of just, you know, letting us know what is, what is acceptable and what is unacceptable and the mm-hmm. things that are unacceptable, we don't talk about them. They're, they're just, you get one chance to, you know, whatever, to make right. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's how we really set up our, our moderation policy inside of the app too. You know, I truly believe that there is 
a group of assholes out there that don't necessarily know that they're assholes. And, you know, once somebody says, hey, look, that's that's not really the way to yeah. approach this or, hey, you can't send a picture of your dick before you <laughs> ask if somebody right, wants to right. see it Darn. because that's <laughs> consent, that, that, you know, yeah, a certain group of people will self-correct themselves and and be appreciative that they were given, you know, the the. You know, the ability to kind of mess up but then make up for it. Mm-hmm. Well, Chris, stop with the pictures. Right? <laughs> hey, that was my number one dating strategy for so Look, long. I'm on my phone. <laughs> Chris, stop. Um, you know, so so tell me then, as you sit here and we talk today, what's happening tomorrow? Or the next, like what what's happening in the immediate future that what you guys are working on, or what is there anything specific or? Yes. So we have just um, recently moved to a, a, a new back end that was mm-hmm. built by um, somebody on our team uh, who's amazing, but maybe a little shy. So I won't Aww, okay. name him, but um, he's David's brother, Max. He, <laughs> there, we go. He, there we go. He, he did an amazing job and we kind of took the, um, the opportunity that the pandemic gave us mm-hmm. to, 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 to redo that because um, there were a lot of changes and updates that needed to, to happen. So we have, we have moved over to that now and um, you know, still has a couple of kinks or bugs that we're working out, but, but very few mm-hmm. um, and engagement is, is up. We can, we can see that inside of, inside of the app, but we are going to be coming out with our, you know, our premium features and, and ways for people to, to support hashtag open and and the community that we are building. So those, those are hopefully going to come out. We thought it would be January. (laughs) So then we thought it'd be February. Right. Then, so we're end of April, beginning of May. I think they will, they will be out and, and they're, they're fun. We're excited about them. They, they bring a new kind of um, aesthetic to the app and, Mm -hmm. and some, Funness. So, in in so let's tell let I'm gonna write when we we have a guest on. I always do a blog beforehand or afterwards and, and let everybody know the specifics. But give the specifics out of your own your own uh, your own lips here, so we people know where to find you. On where to find us? Um, you yeah. can definitely find us in the um, Apple App Store. I think we are, are fairly easy to to find there by searching in um, hashtag open. Um, also in the Google Play Store, I think we're a little harder to find, um, but you could definitely find it by searching in there. Or if you go to our website, which is hashtag open dot com, there's mm-hmm. there's two different um, button links that will take you to the App Store of your choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, on and also. Yep. And also, if you're on our website, we we have, you know, our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I think maybe we mentioned that, you know, over the pandemic, we knew how important connection was going to be for mm-hmm. especially people that are isolated. And so, you know, we put together a series of hashtag open eds that Sarah and Miley do. And, you know, sometimes they're fun. We did one on pervertibles, which was really exciting. Um, mm-hmm. And and we've had serious, you know, more serious uh, topics that we have covered. But they're, they're all on there on our website. And, mm-hmm. and there's good stuff. I think they've almost done like 60 different hashtag open eds. So, so it, it's mm-hmm. really been an amazing Amazing feat that they took on and, and did mm-hmm. exceptionally well. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. That's Bravo. Out. That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's been, you know, it's been fun. We, it, people, people like sex. I think people like learning about sex. I think they like learning, um, you know, what other people do when they're into and they just, they, they just don't necessarily know how to come and, and talk and ask about those things and, you know, I always say just be respectfully curious. People typically like to talk about themselves. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. I think that's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I, was, yeah. I mean, if you're doing it by yourself, go ahead and do it. If it's with another person, make sure you have consent and then knock yourself mm-hmm. out. 
Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, unless you're, and if you're into that, then there's safety ways of you know to knock yourself out without hurting yourself. I'm just teasing, of course, but <laughs> right, right, true. <laughs> true. Right. Yeah. Well, Amanda, I, I we can't thank you enough for coming on. I, it's it's been wonderful um, for sure. It's been you delightful. Know, before we set before we set it up with a guest, we, we we go back and forth a bit, like I did with Amanda with an email, like Chris and I did, and it's always like, well. You could stay for ten minutes. You could stay for twenty minutes, but but it ends up being <laughs> at the end of the hour here at Licky Not Vanilla. We've had her the whole time, and we we've, we've been tickled pink by it. Really, uh, it's been wonderful. always. It's we've absolutely delight. We definitely, if you want to come back on again, just let us know. Absolutely, <laughs> thank absolutely. you. Yeah, anytime. This is fun. Well, thank I'm you so much. I'm normally so nervous. I don't even say anything. So no, you great. were one. Yeah, you never know. It was wonderful. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening, of course. And uh, Amanda, you know what? We'll say goodbye to you for a second, for real quick. And Chris and I will just wrap up the show. We have a couple minutes here. Um, we'll go do some business. I'm looking on vanilla business. But thank you, Amanda Wilson from Hashtag thank Open. You. Yes, bravo. And when we... We put the show up, Amanda. I will give you all the information, of course, and we'll blog everything we can so people can find you guys. You know. But, uh, okay. Thank you, thank so, you so so much. so much. All right. Bye bye. Bye. That was so nice. That was lovely. That was. I'm so excited about that. The project and their app. I think that's absolutely wonderful. I want to give her as much support as possible because yeah. we need someone with that attitude more and more in this world, and that that's absolutely yeah, it's fantastic. A very, it's a very. They have a very positive way of. Uh, of looking at things, you know, and, uh, I, you know, there's a man and she's still hanging out. <laughs> it won't let me hang out. That's you okay. It's okay. You can you can... okay that, no. Oh, no, I did it. Bye-bye. <laughs> there, there she, she goes. goes. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to see you say goodbye to her. She's so wonderful. Um, and I love the fact too, this is, this is a just, mission of love for her. I mean, it's like, it's not like, yeah, yeah we're trying to well, make as much money as possible. And by the way, sex is the right, one of the ways right. that does it. This does, that's not what's going right. on here. No, that's not where she's at. I mean, her and, her and David have had that when I, you know, and, and, Sarah, and Sarah too. They all have a different kind. They have a better, a real positive approach to it. You know, they want to make it good for people and they they want to make it fun or whatever it happens to be. But I, I'm just thrilled with it. And she was a great guest. Oh, fantastic. And, uh, definitely got to get her back on and you again. You were a great co-host as you always oh, are. Oh, and you too, Rafi. This is always a delight. It's always, always fun. <laughs> Mutual admiration <society>. Always fun. <laughs> so uh, I guess you spent some time listening to Licking Non Vanilla again. Oh, you man. poor sons Don't you have of anything to do with your time. <laughs> uh, no refunds. So we'll get this up. We'll get this up soon, and uh, we'll let you know about it. And uh, we want to thank Amanda Wilson. Yes, again from hashtag absolutely. Open. Definitely check out you know hashtag open. And um, I wish there was some way we could support her with this nonsense with Google, but I don't think it's a you know it, it may back back you no. know it's it's just just support them as you can on you know but don't like you know write and be a jerk to google that's not going to help yeah right just just do your business and keep 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 with that exactly them. exactly just you know you know but, go to their website go to their social media and say you support them and do what you can to you know keep the, get the word out absolutely absolutely well chris thank you very much that's uh, m christian over there goodbye m christian Good night, and take care rafi you too buddy and uh we'll see you soon and this has been Licking Non Vanilla. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. And visit us on the web at www.lickingnonvanilla.com. <laughs> <laughs>